For Donald Trump, nothing should be surprising. His disregard for convention is epic. But even by Trump's standards, this is big. The upending of a four-decade-old policy. The United States has declared Israeli settlements in the occupied West Bank legal, meaning Israel's occupation of Palestinian territories is legal. This announcement contradicts America's own assessment. 41 years ago, the U.S. State Department had said that the settlements were inconsistent with international law. The United States under Ronald Reagan called these settlements illegitimate but not illegal. Well, politics and semantics. Now, Donald Trump has changed all of that and he has declared them legal. So we've recognized the reality on the ground. We've now declared that settlements are not per se illegal under international law. Not per se illegal, he says. This announcement violates the fourth Geneva Convention, by the way. This convention prohibits an occupying power, in this case Israel, from trans transferring its population to the occupied area, in this case West Bank. The U.S. decision has drawn a mixed response. The Trump administration has righted a historic wrong here, stood with truth and justice. I thank President Trump and Secretary of State Pompeo. I think it's a great day for the state of Israel and an achievement for generations. The declarations by the U.S. Secretary of State is violating international human law and underlines the participation of this administration in hostility against our Palestinian people. Palestinian groups, Russia, Jordan, and even the United Nations Human Rights Office have slammed this decision. They fear it will lead to more violence. Now, Israeli settlements is a very big issue in this region. Let me give you some numbers. Israel is a country of close to 80 lakh people, 8 million. More than 6 lakh of these people live in settlements. There are close to 140 such settlements in West Bank. And West Bank is home to 30 lakh Palestinians. This is occupied territory. Israel occupied the West Bank in 1967. Earlier it was with Jordan. And since 1967, this region has been roiled in a territorial conflict. And Donald Trump is only fueling it. Since he became president, Israel got a carte blanche of sorts. It has been expanding the settlements and now Donald Trump has legitimized them. The question is why now? Trump is facing an impeachment probe. Netanyahu has failed to form a government after two elections in one year. Why has Trump chosen this moment to make this announcement? Experts say it's his latest gift to Benjamin Netanyahu. He's been showering such gifts on his Israeli friend. In 2017, the U.S. recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Previously, Jerusalem was a disputed site. In 2018, the U.S. stopped funding the U.N. Relief Agency for Palestinian refugees. And then in 2019, that is this year, about eight months ago, just ahead of the Israeli elections, the U.S. recognized Golan Heights as part of Israeli territory. Netanyahu sure has a good friend in the White House. And this latest move could be Trump's attempt to propel him to power in Israel once again. Netanyahu's challenger, Benny Gantz, has time till Wednesday to form a government. Most likely he will not be able to. If Gantz fails and Israel goes to, poll, to polls again for the third time in a year, then this decision could help Netanyahu win. At least that's the calculation. But the U.S. president does not do anything without benefits. So what does he stand to gain from this? As you know, he's facing an impeachment probe at home. The Republicans still have the numbers in the Senate. But the public hearings have dented Trump's stature. Helping Israel will galvanize the support of evangelical Christians who form the core vote bank for Donald Trump. It's all about politics, you see. According to the Pew Research Center, evangelical Christians account for one-fourth of the U.S. population. And with this decision, Donald Trump has appealed to the evangelical loyalty to Israel. This is an election year, and this is a calculated political decision. The repercussions will be huge, not that Mr. Trump cares. His move will deliver a body blow to the two-state solution that Palestinians have been fighting for. Trump has used foreign policy for domestic political gains, and Palestinians will pay the price. This will be a test of world bodies then. Will they let the U.S. president violate the Geneva Convention? I have limited faith in their abilities. 
The European Union, the United Nations and monitor groups, all of them maintain that Israeli settlements in the West Bank are illegal. But can they stop Netanyahu and Trump from making a mockery of international law?